Hi everybody. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up your DeepBot web API to run on your web server and tie into your DeepBot application. My video today is going to show you just how to get the web API set up on your web server. Please keep in mind that I have traditional web hosting through a web hosting company. You may have your own web server that you've built from scratch. I do believe that this would function in the exact same way, but what I'm going to show you, just keep in mind that it's based off of my web server environment. The first thing you'll need is of course DeepBot, which is a Twitch streaming bot. I will preface this by saying that DeepBot is not a free bot. There are many free bots out there. I believe DeepBot to be superior to them because of all the things that you can do. You can either get the beta license or the DeepBot VIP. The beta license is a one-time charge of $10. The DeepBot VIP is a monthly charge of $5. You do need the DeepBot VIP license at $5 a month in order to take advantage of the DeepBot web API or any custom API within DeepBot. DeepBot is only available on Windows machines, so if you're a Mac user, I'm sorry, but you would not be able to use DeepBot at this time. The next thing you'll need is a web server of some kind. It could be a web server that you've built yourself. It could be one through a traditional web hosting company, such as what I'm using. The next thing you'll need is, of course, to grab a copy of the DeepBot web API, which is hosted on GitHub. I've linked to it in the description below. The next thing that you'll need is an internet service provider that will allow you to port forward. Not all internet providers will allow this, so you have to make sure first that your ISP does allow this. The last thing that you'll need is some basic knowledge of web programming. In particular, you'll need to know PHP and JavaScript. So assuming that you're already a DeepBot VIP user and you're already familiar with the DeepBot application, the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead to GitHub and grab a copy of the DeepBot PHP API version 2 from SleepyNet. So from this page, you go ahead and you click the green button, clone or download. You would select download zip. Once that is finished downloading, you can find it in your downloads folder. You do not have to extract it. You can extract it once you move it over to your web server, which I will show you in a second. So the next thing you'll want to do is go over to your web server, which again, for me, I'm using a web hosting company, but you might have your own web server, but you'll need to navigate to wherever you want to host the DeepBot web API. And for me, that would be in my file manager that I can access by going to my cPanel. I then go to my public underscore HTML directory. Of course, if you're familiar with web hosting, you know that anything under that directory is items that are publicly visible. So from here, I'm inside of a folder called test, and then I will upload my zip file that I just downloaded. So I will just drag it to this area. The upload is complete. I can go back to where I just was. I can see that the zip file is here. If I click on it, now I can extract it and I will hit extract files. Once I reload the page, you can see the, the new folder that was created. I'm just going to rename this simply DeepBot so that it is easier for me to remember. When I double click on it, I can see the file structure inside. The next thing you'll want to do is go over to the config folder. Inside, you're going to select the config underscore inc file, and you're going to edit that. So on this page, you're going to want to change all of the configuration settings except for the port number. You're going to keep that at 3337. So starting with server, you're going to change your server IP to whatever is the external IP address of the machine that you're running your DeepBot application off of. You can find this by navigating to the website whatismyip.com. It will look like this and right here it will give you your public IP address. You will copy this number and enter it in place of your server IP. 
Next, you'll need to find your application secret. You can find this by going to your master settings in your DeepBot application, scroll about midway down the page, and it will say API secret. The last two items are pretty straightforward. Those are your streamer name and your points name. These are settings that you have entered into the config tab of your DeepBot application. Your streamer name is of course your Twitch name and your points name is the name of your currency in your channel that you have set in DeepBot. Those two titles can be found on your config tab of your DeepBot application right here for points name and right here for streamer name. The next thing you'll have to do is open your port 3337, assuming that it isn't already. You'll also have to make sure that your port is forwarded. This is done via your ISP settings, so you would log in via the same method that you normally log in to change your Wi-Fi password or the Wi-Fi signal name, etc. I can't show you how to do that because all ISPs are different, but whether you're using Verizon, AT&T, Xfinity, Charter, etc. To learn how to forward a port, just Google your ISP name followed by port forwarding and you should see some articles or possibly YouTube videos to show you how to forward a port. So once you have your port 3337 forwarded, you'll have to open it with outbound rules in your firewall. So for this, you will go to your Windows firewall settings. You can get there by going to your start menu and then typing in firewall. You should come up with the settings panel. From here, you're going to go to advanced settings. You're going to create a new outbound rule. So you'll do this by clicking new rule. The type of rule that this would be would be a port rule. It is TCP. The specific port would be 3337. Allow the connection. All profiles selected and then naming the port. So open port 3337. That would be how you would set it up. The next thing you'll have to do is check to make sure your port is indeed open. So you'll want to go to ugetsignal.com slash tools slash open dash ports. It will display your external IP address both here and here. This will be 80 by default, but then you just erase that number and type in 3337 and then hit check. Then you should see that your port is open on your external IP address with a flag that is green. If you followed the steps for creating an outbound rule for opening your port and the port is still closed, then there's possibly an issue with some sort of security software that you have, such as Morton antivirus, or you did not correctly forward the port with your ISP. Once you have set your configuration variables properly and you have ensured that port 3337 is open, you can begin using the DeepBot Web API. One thing you can do is test out the point system. So what you would do is you would navigate to the browser location of the points.html file within your DeepBot Web API folder. So once you're on the points page, you can go ahead and start adding points for a user. I'm going to do myself. I'm going to do 50 points. Before I hit submit, I'm going to go over to DeepBot and show you exactly how many points I have. Right now I have 10,000 points, but just to be sure, I'm going to go to edit user and make sure that I in fact have 10,000 points. You have to do this because sometimes what is displayed on the list is not accurate because it might not be in sync yet, but whenever you click on a person and you go to edit user, that will always hold the accurate number of points. So I'm at 10,000 points, and now when I hit submit and I go back to DeepBot, it says 10,000 points because it hasn't been synced yet. But if I go to edit user, it shows 10,050 points. And it's still, even after closing that, it's still not quite synced, but it's, it's in my account. I could also go back and remove points from myself. So I'll do that girl slays again, and I will remove 100 points. I hit submit. 
says I deleted a hundred slay bucks from that girl slays again still says 10,000 but it's just not synced yet if I go to edit user now it says I have 9,950 there are some really 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 cool things you can do with the deep bod web api here are a few simple examples i'll have more advanced examples in later videos where i'll have entire videos dedicated to those particular examples but with my current website which is still under construction i have a whole list for displaying my leaderboard which will display my top users based on the number of points that they have within my deep bot system. It will also display their total amount of time watching my channel, as well as how long they've been a, a fan of my channel. I also have a page for displaying all of my channel commands that are publicly available. Some of these need to be filled out for the description, but it has the, the command that you trigger, a description of the command, as well as whether the command is triggered via chat, whisper, or both. Another example of how I use the Deep Out Web API is I've programmed a custom mini game in which two people in chat can fight each other. They'll activate a command in my chat called fight followed by the username of the person they want to attack. That command will then use the Deep Bob Web API to go off to my web server and run a script which calculates everything based on the damage dealt, the move that was selected, how much stamina was used, how much health is remaining for both characters, whether or not it was a kill and whether or not the user got a trophy. It will save the log of the fight in a database and also input a new record into the leaderboard. That way at the end of the month I can calculate which champion dealt the most damage or earned the most trophies and I can announce them in my discord. Lastly, the API will return a private message to both of the users involved in the fight via Twitch whispers. Another example of how I use the web API is in both my event reader and in my labels. So my event reader, I have replaced my Twitch alerts and my DeepBot built-in alerts that announce when someone follows your channel or subs or donates, cheers, hosts, etc. I've replaced that with my own script that saves the events on my web server. And I did this because I also allow people to display GIFs on my overlay by using a command. And I wanted the GIFs to be in the exact same location, but without overlapping my other notifications. So what happens is someone enters a GIF command or they sub or donate and all of those events are added to a list and then I have a browser source file in OBS that's constantly checking that list file and checking for updates and whatever updates there are it displays it on my screen so none of the events overlap each other but they all take up the same spot on my screen in the bottom right corner I have my labels which again if somebody subs hosts donates, cheers, follows, etc. Those labels are updated not via text files, but actually stored on my web server and updated in real time. This allows me to show other information such as the person who has hosted me the most amount of times in the current month, the person with the most trophies for my champion game, etc. Lastly, this is a dashboard I've developed and it's actually a rather complex example, but I wanted to touch on it briefly. What this allows me to do is combine both my Twitch chat as well as all of the vital stats that I would like to see during my stream all into one view. So on the left, I have my chat and on the right, I have various stats that I would like to see, including a history of events. If the list gets too long, I can then archive it. But it will show me hosts, subs, follows, cheers, raids, etc. And then in these panels on the bottom, it will show me my session follow count, my session bit count, donation count, sub count, as well as other custom program items that I have here. One thing here that is custom program that also uses the web API pretty heavily is my wheel spin game. This is a sub and donation appreciation game, which whenever somebody subs or donates, the number is tallied up here and their name is added to a file. This 
panel is reading that file every one second to see if there's an update. And if there is an update, it will give me the new total count and allow me to spin the wheel if the number is one or higher. Clicking on this spin the wheel will then change my scene in OBS and initiate the wheel spin. The wheel spin then uses the Deep Bod Web API for whatever item the wheel lands on, it will automatically trigger a certain command in DeepBot. So that's another way that the Deep Bod Web API is tied in. So I hope you've enjoyed this video of showing exactly how to get started using the DeepBot Web API. I hope you become inspired by some of the examples that you can do. Some of them are very, very simple and easy to implement. You can do way more complex things if you have more in-depth knowledge of web programming. I'll have videos of various examples I use in my stream in later videos. If you have any ideas of things that you would like to see implemented or if you need help implementing certain things in your stream, feel free to reach out and I'll be glad to help you. If you found this video helpful and you're excited to get started using the DeepBot Web API, please make sure you drop a like on this video. Please leave a comment with how you currently use the DeepBot Web API or some things that you might want to try out using the API. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, follow me on all my social medias, and I will see you next time.